Hey, y'all. So it's been like a year and a half since I did that eight and a half grams. And that video is on my website, amanitadreamer.net, because I can't put it here for obvious reasons. And I forgot, honestly, that 24 hours after I did it, I sat down in front of the camera while everything was fresh and I was starting to remember. And I like, recorded a, everything. So if you've seen that other video, this was my opinion and viewpoint on what happened and what it all was and sort of like my report about it. And then I don't know why I never uploaded it, completely forgot. Following this one, I am also going to do like a year, year and a half later, update the integration update and what I learned really profound, what I got out of that took a long time to figure it out, but it's really great. So that will be next. So I just wanted to give you a, the context for what you're about to see. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, so uh, this is the second video in the series of my psilocybin trip. If you haven't seen the trip, it's all on video from before I took the mushrooms all the way through until I was coming down. So that if you care to even see that, then that that's before this one. And then after this one, I'll do a follow up in a couple of weeks or whatever. So what I want to do is it's only been 24 hours since my trip. And I'm today I started remembering more stuff and then watching the video triggered other memories. And I wanted to talk to you while I can so I don't forget anything. But also bear with me. My human is still struggling to return. So I took what I believe is about eight grams. It may be a little bit more. And the way I did it is I simmered it with lemon to convert as much as I could and then shot it really quickly because I didn't want to fuck around. I didn't want to take any chances. I wanted to go. And I didn't want it to languish and take a long time. I just wanted to get there. And so the video that you saw, I put words on the video that said, this is where our eye forgot about the camera. So it happened really quickly. The come up started 13 or 14 minutes after I drank uh, the tea. And pretty quickly, it came in waves of that, that the noise that you get and it feels like you're leaving. You can feel that you're leaving and that, that squeezing, like you feel like you're getting squeezed out of your body and the pressure and the loudness and, and it came in waves and it was a pretty, it was really harsh and, and pretty fast. And I only remember about three of those waves and there were others I saw on the camera, but I don't remember them. And between them, I would return and able to see through my eyes that I was here. But with each one, I was less here and started to see the visual overlays of everything. And then pretty close to the end before I left completely, when I had that last squeezing and I came out of it, I was talking and I remember sort of not being able to use my mouth anymore and feeling like, okay, this is it, I'm going. And the next thing I know, there was this beautiful lotus flower and it was just opening and opening and opening and it was blues and purples. And then all of a sudden it just got swiped away from me and the machine elves were there and they were like, hold still. And they just started tinkering. And I'm like, wait, what? Stop. What are you doing? What's good? And they were like, look, it's a flower. Look at the flower. We're busy. Look at the flower. Like dumb human. Look at the flower. And I remember thinking, this is not good because they had, they look like, you know what a picture of a hookworm looks like? It's round and it's got those little teeth looking thing in the middle, except it was machines, you know, like those machines on the matrix. And they were all coming in from all sides and there's like metal and clicking and clacking and shit going on and, and they were working all around me. And I remember asking them, okay, I really don't mind what you're doing. I know that you have to do it because you at least tell me what's going on because I'm like, I'm interested. And they said, you have the information you agreed to bring and we need to um, give you information. And 
clean everything up. And then they gave me the analogy of basically we're defragging your hard drive. And I was like, okay. And they said, and, and by the way, we appreciate your service, but honestly, like we have a lot to do here and you know, you're one of, of many and we just need to do our job. Can you look at the flower? Look at the flower. Look pretty human. There's a pretty flower. Like just let us do our job. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. And for some reason it was extremely uncomfortable but not to my physical body, but to my sense of beingness. And like they had to keep holding me down like a child squirming. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to cooperate. But I remember at some point it got really unbearable. And uh, my trip sitter said that that was the point where I was screaming. When I look at the video and I look at the timeline of what I think was happening, I, I think. And it would make sense because I remember hearing screaming and I didn't know why. Like, why were they screaming at me? But I think I was the one screaming. And he said it was uh, rambling, mumbling unintelligibly out loud. But I know what I was trying to do was, I was asking them to please not take some of the memories that they were taking. And they said, this is not negotiable. And I don't know, uh, like I went into this wanting all the shit to go, like whatever has damaged me, I don't want to keep it. Like, so why would I argue to keep a memory? And isn't that just my human? experience like why would I give a shit if it wasn't serving me but I have a feeling some transaction took place where it was a very valuable memory that I think meant a lot to me that went over lifetimes like between me and other entities or people that I love over several dimensions and they said that that journey was over and they needed to take the information and they just yanked it out and it was gone. And I remember not even being given a chance to say goodbye to that person or that being or the experiences we had together and that I'm never going to see them again. And then that's the end of our journey and I just needed to move on. And um, it was the end of a road. But I remember that that was excruciating. Like they yanked my soul out. When they let me go, they said, we really, again, we really appreciate your service. And I was like, okay. They said, D is there did you come here? For, did you need something? And I said, uh, the Amanita. Can I, like, talk to the Amanita? And they were like, oh, of course, this way. And I turned around, and there was the female Amanita entity. And she said, oh, hey, do you want to see? And I said, yeah. And she took me through a door that said employees only. And when the door opened, suddenly it was bottomless and completely three-dimensional space. And I'm gonna do my best to explain this to you because this has to do with you. So what I heard was the universal hum and it was loud and beautiful and it was home. And it is the construct on which everything is built. So, our physical space, the things that are dense matter that we feel here, the universal hum of energy that makes a sound is the framework on which everything else attaches. So we are the universal hum. And my mug, Daniel's mug, is the universal hum. Our cars. And so the reason that we like certain things and not other things is because some things move the universal hum perfectly. 
and then some things don't. So like certain pieces of machinery scramble the universal hum. And then rocks and water, clean water, natural good clean water, uh, a lot of animals, humans that are tweaked and in alignment will will hum the universal hum pretty clearly. And the reason we're attracted to that is it sounds like home. We're like, oh my God, that feels so familiar. And we're drawn to it, which is why we're attracted to people that are on a little bit of a higher level than we are because they're, they're humming just a little bit closer to the universal hum. And some vehicles move that universal hum actually really well. So like a really well-made sports car because there's very little resistance in it. And because the people who made it were so focused on making it with such precision that the love that went into it and the intense focus that went into it, it will actually move the universal hum. And it's why it's not just the human construct that, oh shit, that's a you know, $450,000 car. Like, no, th there's something moving through that car. And so a, ch a shittily made thing scrambles the universal hum and so it's very discordant. And people that are willing to have badly made things around them all the time, they're not very well in touch with the universal hum, which means they're very disconnected from home, which is why they're broken. And it's not that the universal hum keeps you healthy. It's that the more you can feel the universal hum, the more healthy you are. And so it's just more of an indicator if that makes sense. So when we went through the doors and out into three-dimensional space, the hum was beautiful and loud. And what I was looking at was a structural framework of realities that are kind of like Mandelbrot. You know, if you don't know what Mandelbrot is, look it up. But it comes off of a central center with all of these tessellations and Mandelbrots coming off of it. And all of those are lives and galaxies and universes and experiences and timelines. And there were machines tending to it. And you could fly into any one of those and keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until you hit a specific time point. And then you, you hit a reality in a moment. And I was allowed to pick any point and zoom in and, and look at it. And it turned out every one of them I picked were places I was being simultaneously. And I didn't like that. I, it felt like I wasn't supposed to look at it. But it was like looking through a porthole into, like from the outside of a ship, looking through a porthole into the stateroom. Like I was witnessing myself being in a timeline and a reality and living. And so at different points in there were little Amanita mushrooms plugged into it. And she said that that was just there for visual effect for me to understand that those were people working, anchoring the Amanita. And there were other points working to anchor other entheogens. And so she said, this is, I'm only showing you the work you do that you're involved in. And since you're involved in, in the entheogens, the entheogens are working with the animals that are wanting to incarnate and, and live in a, in a density. And density is fucked up. And it's really hard because you have all this energy and you've got to squeeze a small amount of it into a physical thing. And it's barely enough to survive on. And so you need a lot of help. And, the you know, wherever you live, you get nutrients. But the rest of you is fucked. And so we do our best to, to support all of these beings that are living in densities right now. And they're popping in and out all the time. And we're trying to lovingly help them stay where they want to be to experience it. And we... We work with some of those beings, like you, me, to help the others. So she said, we here on the other side plug in, we, the Amanita, we plug in. And then uh, some of you see us. But then some of you, like 
you, me, actually want to work with us and spread the word for us and you make the job easier on our side for all of the living beings in density on your side. And there are many others like you. But she said, you know, you, you and I talked about this when you were ready to make your visit. I pulled you over and it was like, gave you a flyer. It's like, hey, <laughs> before you go, and I started laughing and she's like, no, you took it and you understood the download and you were like, sure, no problem. And so we're really glad that you're helping us and we're sorry you had such a hard time getting here, but we really appreciate the work you're doing. And then I said, but what role do you play with psilocybin? And she said, oh, we all work together. It's, you know, I'm not like higher or lower. There's no like real hierarchy here. We're all doing our best to help and when we we have different roles and I said well why is it that you don't the Amanita doesn't feel like this like a, a, she said oh no because the Amanita goes denser and uh, the the psilocybin comes out of density so I don't know why I'm crying she said um you go deeper than, than the realm you see. There's beings of, beingnesses of you that go even more dense. And you don't have a way to affect that part of yourself. And that's what the Amanita does. We deal with the more dense parts of you and defrag it, basically. And then the psilocybin deals with the higher parts of you, like the level you are here, like the plane that you're in now. And she said, good job, by the way, getting the fuck out of density. Like, that's hard. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't comfortable. And she said, well, look around. I mean, you're here. You're on the other side. You might as well, like, look around and help yourself. And I said, well, where can I go or not go or do or not do? And she just laughed and left. I'm like, okay. So I started, like, trying to talk to the psilocybin people. And they, not people, they were being, they look to me like Squidward. On Spongebob round thingies and swimmer thingies to move through the density which is stupid because like why would they bother having shapes and I never thought about like do I have a body or a shape it didn't occur to me to think of that I would I was just a point of consciousness and then fucking elf machine people started screaming. I heard like metal, a metallic scream. And I, I turned around at them and I, and I remember screaming and I was surprised at it. I went, no, but it came out like this, like this universal, like threatening, deep growling, like, and they just looked at me like, whatever. And they snatched me. And where they took me felt like I was moving through dimensions rapidly. And it was more than my being was supposed to be able to handle. Like I wasn't supposed to move that quickly. And I remember hearing screaming behind me. Like the Amanita or others were like, fuck. Like that sucks. <laughs> and... Where they were taking me, I knew, was the alley. I don't know how I knew that. I don't know what the alley is. I just went, oh, fuck, the alley. Like, I knew that's where they were taking. Like, I had been there before. And the dimensions they were moving me through uh, were moving faster than the light tunnels. So, if any of you have ever been anywhere, you've gone through the tunnels of light. We were moving faster than that so that we, you could no longer see light. And instead, all I could see were the, the geometry of the universe, the purples and blues of it. And as I was moving past it, it would shatter. And I was like, we are not going to a good place. And they got me to the alley and there were just basically a lot of ne'er-do-wells that hang out in alleys in the universe. And... You know, I mean, these are all analogies, but they feel pretty accurate. 
And I think those were the ones I was negotiating with when my trip sitter said I was mumbling incoherently because they were stealing from me, from my memories and my energy and my soul. They were yanking parts of it. And I, I didn't know how to defend myself Although I know that there was a way for me to have defended myself, but I didn't know, like, it was powerless, but at the same time, I was really pissed. Like, I didn't feel powerless. I knew I was powerless, but I was really pissed. And I know that what I was trying to say to them was, you know you'll pay. You know I'll fuck you up. Maybe not now. You know this is wrong. You know that I can bring others. I don't know what any of this means. I just, I was saying, I was speaking about things that something in me knows about, but I don't, I don't know about. And at some point I know that it was getting to be too much and that they could take too much. And you can say, oh no, that was ego death. Nope. This was wrong. This was something that violates the laws of the universe. And then I'm like, well, if it can happen, then clearly it's not against the laws of the universe. Like, it's all fair game up there. You should have defended yourself better or something. So, I'm, I'm double-sided about it. Like, both feel real to me. Um, I know that at some point I was screaming for help. And then my trip sitter said that he heard me asking for help. And he couldn't get me to come around. That he was... In, and I, I've looked at most of the video, and this isn't on video, so I think that he was in the process of changing out batteries when he saw that I wasn't okay. And so he just ran, but he said that he couldn't, he was shaking me and talking to me and just trying to get me conscious, sitting me up and, and he, I was gone. I was just babbling incoherently. And he was, he was at the point where he was thinking he might have to try to give me like a benzo or something. But I, I told him that, no, I don't ever want that in my body again. He was concerned about maybe needing to take me somewhere like to a hospital or something, but I t I'm not afraid of it. And I told them there's really nothing bad that can happen. It's all in my head. So please just, I don't know, let me work it out. Like, so he, he remembered that and he honored that. But I remember hearing in the distance, someone calling my name and I used that like a tether, like it came through in my reality where I was and I grabbed onto it and I was gone from the alley and I opened my eyes and I was in the timeline construct of density. And I looked around at the blanket that I had and I remember like trying to make sense of where I was and my eyes were darting around and I couldn't really see, like, cause I had the overlay of the universe on everything. I could hear the universal hum. I could see the geometry that's overlaid on everything. And I remember think, thinking I needed to anchor and I said out loud that I need to anchor on something. I need something to anchor to. And that's somewhere in there, some, something anchored me I don't remember what it was. And then I remember feeling like I had to leave again. And then my eyes got heavy. And I remember just slowly losing the ability to stay. And I went backward out of the room, through a window, through a porthole, through a whatever spot that we leave here through backward. And popped out again back into the universal hum and my daughter was there and uh, it was beautiful and we just traveled together through the universe and I remembered that that's what we were doing before I came here 
And so what I think we were doing and what happens is you just travel and you see the geometry of the universe and it's beautiful and it's just traveling by you as you're zooming around. You're just talking and chatting and doing your thing. And she would veer off and leave and go somewhere. And I would veer off and check in, look in through those portholes into a density and think, do I want to visit there? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. And I'd just keep going. And then she would join me again and we'd travel again together for a little while. And I'd venture off somewhere and check in a lot of realities. And then I remember seeing a reality that was really beautiful. It was a planet that was just beautiful. And I stayed a long time looking at that reality. Like I could go there and sit on that planet and look and enjoy that planet for a little while. And then just by thinking about it, I popped back into the and I went flying again. And she would just show up and then leave. And she was so beautiful. Like the beauty that I knew her to be before I even gave birth to her, I could feel her radiantness and her beauty. It's the beauty I've just always felt with her only on steroids, like massive beauty on the other side. And the, I knew then that there are others we travel with and that's pretty much like what I was doing. We just choose lifetimes to come experience. And so there are other people out there that I travel with. And one of them died from this earth density about nine or 10 years ago. And I was just devastated. And I know that he's one of the people I travel with. And there are a lot of us that we travel together, but it's not a big deal. Like if one veers off and leaves, you know they'll join you later. Like nobody travels together. We all travel alone, but we are not alone. There's always entities around. and But there's those same ones that we tend to hang with. But we never really care when they go because they're going to go enjoy a density somewhere and you know they'll catch up with you later and you just chat about it and like hey i just got back from a density over here you i think you'd like it you want to go sure let's go and you go join a density somewhere and you live a lifetime but to the other side where we're going we're flying it's like the equivalent of you going on a long road trip and you stop at a gas station you get some gas you use the restroom you get some chips you get back in the car and you go like it's just a blip and sometimes it's shitty and sometimes it's great. So, you know, you get to a place and you go inside and, and it's in, or it smells and the bathrooms are in bad shape and they don't have the chips you like and the pumps are broken. And you're like, well, that sucked and that was a waste of time. Like, and you get back in the car and you just keep going. And you don't know. It's a gamble when you want to get into a density. And I think a lot of times I chose densities pretty quickly and other times I really researched them before I chose them but it's not that big a deal like it's totally unimportant and the ride the whole part of enjoying the density is to make it really fucking important <laughs> like really real and really important and really serious and then to blow everything out of proportion and make it all really important. <laughs> and so, um, Shroomy Shmatty was there for the first part of the trip, but he had to, to get back home to tend to his animals. And I remember talking to him at one point when I was flying and I popped back here into density and he was standing there about to leave and he was saying goodbye and I could see the beauty radiating off of him and uh, I was like you know and and then all of a sudden I remembered we had traveled lifetimes to get here and by that I mean we had we've been in densities together before on doing whatever different things like he's like hey I'm gonna run over here okay I'll be there later and we had planned to do this density and evidently there was something we had to figure out in density form, how to do, like some way that we don't get along that we had to figure out so that we could be in this density and do YouTube. Like, 
it's so unimportant and yet we traveled lifetimes to get here and i think i said that on camera i think that's got on camera where i said dude we something was so important that we traveled lifetimes to get here and it's so fucking unimportant like when the fuck is that and it turns out like there are literally just thousands of entities that we travel with and so when i say this it's not like he's an important being he is in the sense that he's one of my group or something of the thousands of people i travel with and so do you and sometimes like we're traveling with people but we only bump into them temporarily here because just like up there they veer off and go do something else and then they meet back up with us and we may travel along for a while together. Or they may show back up and be like, oh, I see something and then they go again. Like, we're all just coming and going. Now, I'm not telling you any kind of universal truth. I'm just telling you what I got, like what I saw. It could all be bullshit. I don't, I don't know. And uh, I came back from all that and begged to talk to my daughter. So I called my daughter. That's not on camera. There's some really sad shit that I went through. And I only have like brief memories of it, but it had to do with this lifetime and it had to do with pulling out some shitty memories like work that needed to be done, stuff I needed to work through. And that was hard. And I barely remember it, but I remember crying to the point where my stomach was hurting and my throat was hurting and my eyes were hurting like felt like I was grieving death. Really deep shit. And I talked about it. And my trip sitter told me all the things I said. And I excavated some shit from like the last eight years maybe. It was hard. So when you see me sitting on the floor... That's when I came back and I never left again. And I was starting to come down. And what had happened is, I get it now, when we are born, trying to get into our bodies is dense. You know, it's really, really dense. And that's why we live in, in a sack, a water sack in our parents to, to sort of ease that transition between no beingness into a physical form where we can at least still float. And then once we're born, then we transition into the density of gravity. But when I came back, like my human wasn't working anymore, like yet. And it squeezing back in was very heavy, but most of me just kept leaving. I kept leaving and coming back and like I could focus and see things and then it would turn into the geometry of the universe and then I would be back out there and then I would sort of come back. And then mostly I was just kind of staying, but still hearing the hum of the universe, seeing the geometric overlay on everything. Not really able to, to form words, but I had to pee. And so they, they were trying to help me get up, but then I just, I felt like my human still wasn't on, back online yet. And so somehow they got me to the bathroom I peed and then walking back I just slid down to the floor <laughs> and that's where I sat and at that point I remembered being hungry and that's what you saw on camera and from then on out everything is on camera everything that you hear is is everything I was experiencing but everything happening on the other side was over what I know about the Amanita is we did have an agreement that I would do whatever I'm doing with you guys and that it's something I'm really happy to do and but it's not fulfilling any like major soul purpose or like it's nothing more than right before I came into density I'm like sure I'd love to do that that sounds great but to my human it's everything it feels very deep 
and I'm very happy to do it, especially after knowing that it got me into the employees only door on the other side and I got to see the, not like I'm special. Many of you have seen that same construct. If you have, um, I really want to know about it. I'm still so delirious and, and confused. It's all I can do to make this. I think that I was still on it most of this day. I'm still coming down. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for listening. I hope it wasn't boring. And uh, I love you beautiful people. This is a really weird experience. <laughs> thanks for being here with me for it. Okay, bye.